How can I translate my sample roast to a production roast? This is one of the questions I hear the most, and this is why we've organized a webinar to really deep dive into this topic with Sam Cora from Nucleus Coffee Tools, and you will now see an extract of this webinar. If you ever want to participate in one of these webinars, and by the way, they are free and they are open to all, then have a look at the description now. You'll find the link not to miss any of the next sessions because we already have some really nice and interesting toppings planned for the next weeks. But now let's start. So the numbers that I would be focusing around are these ones when it comes to the time, the duration, the development percent, the increase after first crack, uh, opposed to the exact temperatures when things are occurring. Because as I said, it's quite hard to have that direct translation. Uh, the roastery that I worked at, we had six roasters, all the same model. They were all geesons. Um, but we had a one kilo, a five kilo, we had two 15s, a 30, we had a 45 at one point, but we sold it and recently a 140, uh, even between the two 15s directly calibrated, the exact temperature points are not exact. How we profile our roasting, uh, in order to be able to use both of them is around the exact numbers and the details that we're looking for. What you'll notice is you'll start to see tendencies that you notice coffees around 64 density and this process will be cracking at a similar time. And the best thing to start to develop as you translate these is your own internal database that translates to your roaster. So you know, okay, when I have coffees in this range, that generally relates to a first crack on my production roast around 170 to 179. It gives you that really great starting point that you can start to build that direct translation across uh, and understand where that will be. Um, you've already got a great starting point for drop temperature, a great starting point for where your turning uh, point should sit, how to manage the heat application throughout the roast, but also at the start of the roast. Uh, and then things that you'll need to have a look at, which I'm going to jump back. But I just thought to mention, it's really important that you don't directly look at these number points, uh, because I can tell you right now, the way in which the link thermocouple works, you're probably like, oh, my coffee cracked at 203 on a traditional gas roast. You might see that a crack occur 186, 196, or even 216. If your probe is a little bit different, it's really important to note that the timing of the occurrence and the details of how much we've moved is the most important thing to take away over the exact temperature points themselves. Even if you took this profile and could import it into your system, it would make it very challenging for the roast to follow this simply because the thermocouples in the link to the thermocouple on your roast is going to be a little bit uh, more challenging. I'm going to go back to that uh, slide because I didn't cover some of the points and we'll keep on going. Hopefully we're all with it and it's, uh, it's, it's working for you guys. So the other thing to look at is rate of rise coming into first crack. And this is very important when it comes to um, the applied heat. And this is going to directly relate. And I'm going to skip back a few points to the number or the uh, size of the power curve. So the higher the power curves, generally what we will be seeing in the roast is we'll be seeing earlier uh, applied heat, slightly higher drop temperatures, potentially higher turning points, higher rate of rise uh, heat peaks at the start. But we will need to manage generally throughout this middle section here, a lower amount of applied heat in order to make sure that when we come into first crack, we are not overpowering that coffee and starting a snowball or losing control. And that's very much for those low densities or those, you know, coffees dried in cherry that you will generally see it. So even though when you see those lower numbers, you're applying more at the start, you're more conservative through the middle and towards the end of the roast in order to get control over that roast, uh, which is really important because it dictates what your target uh, speed coming into first crack should be. Uh, I will give some generalized examples here. For me, when I was roasting Bosch coffees, it would be very, uh, sorry, roasting coffees, it would be very much um, subjective to the style of roast. So as you know, Link has cupping, espresso, omni, and filter uh, to what my target increase might be. 
for those quicker roast generalized styles like cupping or filter, I was happy to sit on a higher range of ROI coming into first crack, knowing that my 10% or whatever it may be the increase would be over a much shorter period of time. And I wanted to make sure I could get enough caramelization on the coffees. Uh, longer the profile, generally speaking, the lower this number is going to be um, sitting. But it also is a number to look at depending on these elements here, which is density and process of the coffee. So a natural coffee or coffees that we know conduct their own heat source that when they're coming into first crack, they take a lot of heat energy through the middle of the roast and at the start of the roast in order to get the momentum in. Once they get rolling, they really hold on to that heat quite strongly that if we're not conservative or proactive through the middle of the roast, we are going to lose a little bit of control potentially coming into crack where we'll have a crack, but it's going to drastically increase at a rate that maybe we don't have control over. So generally what I'd be looking at is if I'm seeing these lower numbers, pairing that with dried in cherry, I know already that I'm really going to be focusing on this middle section um, because I have put a lot of roast energy into the start of the coffee um, based on the presets that I've done. When I'm looking at a coffee where I'm seeing those higher numbers and potentially pulped or dried outside of cherry, I may be more conservative at the start of the roast, what we would call, you know, in that dry phase and in the Mayard, but through that middle section, potentially I'm being more conservative that my biggest fear is not having too much heat but being too gentle and potentially having a crash in heat, which means that I don't have enough momentum to compensate. Why I reference that when it comes to the process um, and the, this particular element here is that let's say for cupping or for uh, filter, those quicker style roasts, if I was in a natural coffee and let's say my range was between six and uh, four degrees, I would be generally sitting more towards the lower extent of four degrees increase um, per minute or put 30 seconds or whatever your setup is for those coffees. Uh, but when it came to the wash coffees that I knew I needed to be a little bit more conservative on, potentially I'd be sitting on the slightly higher limit of my range. Um, for espresso, obviously that would decline depending on the roast time that I'm looking to do. Um, but it definitely gives you a nice handy tip of knowing, okay, I've got this stage, how I'm going to manage my heat. And then in that stage, just as you're about to come into first crack, having a target of where you should be sitting increase wise in order to make sure that you have control over the roast, similar to how, um, the link system is doing that automatically for you, but you actually can translate some of the data that you're getting from these elements and these elements in order to make sure that you have control over that particular stage. Let's move on. I know that there's a little bit there and hopefully that that was uh, assisting. So we're going to talk on the roast style and the process. So I kind of tapped into it a little bit, but for me, uh, this is that uh, area where we're dictating those numbers that we're getting uh, in the data that we saw. So very much so roast style that we're picking and the process to me is very much how you can decide some of these numbers when it comes to your production roast. The nice thing about um, the link system is you can directly take some of the temperature increases, development percentages, and roast times that you're targeting and directly translate them that you don't have to worry about an interpretation. Those values are going to be somewhat uh, correct. And you can definitely utilize them to achieve those roasts. The only thing that I would say is some of the increases, especially when it's longer, lower and cooler, are going to be very challenging on a more manual based roast. And you may want to give yourself a larger degree of tolerance. It's really going to be around your burn mechanism or heat control of how your roaster is calibrated. Remember, a roaster has a high-end setting and a low-end setting, and the sensitivity of the high-end setting and the sensitivity of the low-end setting are very important when it comes to how much control you will have over this exact increase um, after the point of first crack. 
uh, and potentially things you can calibrate, things you can, you know, customize. I was notorious for drilling out by half a millimeter burners. So I had more top end power and then customizing the control in order to have more finite adjustment when it came to low end, but using standard roasters and how they've improved, uh, with technology, um, we have fantastic control on most roast systems that are out there. Um, but it's a nice thing that you can take that information and translate what you're looking for. Big one I'd be looking for is that development percentage. I think that that's really handy, uh, within the link system with what you're seeing and how you're translating that you can take that information or the profile that you've started to build based on your drop temperature, turning point, applied heat through the middle, knowing roughly when it's going to crack, knowing when you should come into first crack, then you've got that last stage where it's monitoring uh, your development stage. I would definitely be focusing around that um, time frame as well that you're targeting. Do note that sometimes if your roaster, you're roasting a bigger batch size or you don't have that top end power in order to get momentum moving that you may be sitting a little bit slower in your roast that, you know, you might get a very nice expression on a seven minute roast on the link for your filter, but you simply, no matter how hard you try, don't have enough roast power in order to be able to directly translate it. You can take elements of what you've achieved with that roast in terms of timings. And then even if it's a little bit longer, use your development percentage uh, in order to still get a successful roast. What I like to dictate is based on roast style and process my target increase. And I think that this is really important for, uh, roast planning in order to make sure that you're sitting in a roast, um, expression that you want. I would largely say in the development phase, these are the two factors that you will need to plan for and, uh, somewhat some of the more important elements of whether you have a successful outcome of that particular roast, um, based on, you know, that session there. So definitely able to directly translate them. Uh, I would say roast style, generally speaking, you know, an espresso or a longer roast is generally going to see a larger increase over that target percentage sheer by time that you're spending in the development stage. Uh, it's also nice to know your preferences and styles. Uh, funny enough, if you guys want a little history, this particular profile I'm showing you was from my first ever Brewers Cup competition. I was a terrible brewer. I couldn't brew coffee at all, but I created a roast profile that I knew would be very good for French press because I couldn't brew coffee. I could brew a French press. It was easy. You can see that it's super quick, quite a high increase and for a filter coffee, quite a high development percentage, but because of the style of prepare preparation I was looking for, I actually manipulated those elements to suit how I was intending to extract it so that I got a full sweet coffee, uh, even with an extremely coarse grind profile. Um, going back, definitely you can take the elements from roast style process and the information you have to dictate what increase you're doing, depending on what you're trying to prepare it for, as well as the style development percent. I would take that from the link system that you have. And roast time, you gave a pretty good indication of what you're looking for. It really just depends on the power of your machine. Uh, if you're finding that you are struggling to match similar roast times, but you really want to do them, I would suggest trialing slightly smaller batch sizes than what you may be looking for, because you'll generally have a more successful uh, control over the roast. Last thing that I have for you guys, um, before we jump into some questions is just kind of talking through the different stages and how you can see, um, through the link system, we're managing what these are. Some of you will be familiar with them. Some of you will not, uh, but essentially the start of the roast, that preheat, uh, phase in the link system is that dry phase. Uh, a nice thing that you can look to do is if you are managing your roast and trying to mimic particular stylings or timings of the link on a production roast, you can start to have a look at the different phases and when they've occurred and potentially try and link them up as well from a time bracket 
not so much a temperature bracket. So you can be like, cool, I can see on the link system that around, you know, that two minute, 33 minutes on this particular profile is when we start to see it go from that greenish color, it's lost its moisture, it's turning to straw. You can start to see whether you're tracking on a good plan when it comes to the production based on how that's matching or directly translating. Same thing about that Mayard phase. Uh, I'm not sure if you know on the system, but there's a CC logging element that you can put on it. Um, that will allow you to start to time out and see the percentage of the roast or the amount of time that you spend from the start or the finish of dry phase. And you're getting into that uh, more coloration when you're starting to see that color change happening. Um, you can also measure and see how that will directly translate. And as I mentioned, the development phase really relates to these things here, what you're looking to do, which is controlling the increase, the development percentage and the roast time. Best thing to note, all of those come together in order to create that roast profile that you're looking for uh, and the style of roast that hopefully will allow you to get a similar expression to that hard um, I guess, work that you've put in trying to dial that exacting profile and exacting style on, of coffee on the link system and be able to translate that up to a bigger roast. I hope this video was interesting for you and you learned a lot. If you want to participate in one of the next webinaries, then make sure you directly register. You find a link in our description with all the next topics and all the next dates and the possibility to register. I hope to see you soon.